we've talked about uh, bagging, and now it's time to try out a little bit of code. So you have this skeleton in place already. Uh, it hasn't really changed all that much from the last example that we were doing with the voting classifier. I have added uh, an import for the bagging classifier that is provided by scikit-learn. Scatterplot, the function, does the uh, same thing. What I've added is a little bit of documentation for you. Loading up the same uh, data set so that we at least have some basis of comparison. And I'm still going to select uh, only 100 samples of the 600 samples uh, for training. The rest will be used for validation. And, and those, are, those samples are already shuffled, and that should be pretty clear from the, the true labels here. Uh, the distribution of the small dots, although those are hard to find, is about the same as the distribution of the larger circles. Okay, so first off, I'm going to create a uh, decision, decision tree classifier. Uh, again, it's with a max leaf nodes of three, so that means we can have at most two questions. Um, this particular figure here after the fit, and we're, we're focusing our performance with respect to the validation set, uh, but we are showing the training set here too. We, we looked at this particular picture before. You can see two very clear boundaries, one that's horizontal here and the other that's uh, vertical. And the performance was uh, an 82% accuracy. All right, so let's go ahead and build our uh, bagging classifier. The class for, for this is just bagging classifier. And we have to tell it what classifier we're using. So we'll, we'll use classifier one. So this is what we just declared in the last uh, bit of code. And then we have to give it uh, the parameters for the ensemble. Uh, let's start with an estimator. Let's say n estimators, I don't know, let's say five. And we'll set our max samples. So, so we have a total of 100 samples to work from. Just for fun, let's select 50 samples. And we're going to be doing actual bagging here as opposed to pasting. So we have to set bootstrap to true. And I'm going to set n jobs to negative 1. And again, that what that means is that we'll use all available cores on the machine to do training. And, and since these are independent of one another, these five estimators are independent of one another, we can actually parallelize their training process. All right, so that's it. So this is creating an instance of the bagging classifier. And then all of this is just what we've seen uh, before. We're fitting to our training set. We're predicting for both our training and validation sets and generating our scatter plot and then scoring uh, based on just the validation data. So that shouldn't take too long. So what we ended up with was 82.8% uh, performance, uh, accuracy. Uh, if you recall from our voting classifier, we were, we were able to get up to 84% uh, 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 or so. Um, so we're still a bit below that, but this is a tiny bit higher than what our individual tree uh, could do. And so that's, there's our, uh, what our performance looks like. Terribly impressive. So let's keep playing a little bit and let's push uh, N estimators up to uh, 10. So we'll double the number of estimators. And, and you'll notice that we've jumped up to 88.2% uh, uh, performance. And what we got out of this was that uh, we're starting to get these samples over here labeled a little bit better. So that's good. Let's try going up to 20 estimators. Okay, so performance has uh, dropped. Maybe we got lucky with those uh, first 10. We lost this set of samples over here. Uh, just for fun, let's double that again. 83%. Okay, so that, so it hasn't changed a whole lot. So part of the issue here is that different estimators are not so independent of one another, especially given that each estimator is getting half of the training set. So let's let's drop this down. We'll go back to uh, 10 estimators here. I'm going to drop it down to just 10 samples. So we're getting one tenth of the training set to train each of our 
uh, each of our decision trees, and we're going to create uh, 10 of those decision trees. So what's pretty cool there is that we actually bumped our performance up to 84.8. Uh, it's a, not a huge bump, but we did get something. And you'll notice there's, there's clearly some horizontal decision surface, which is sitting along here. But in this vicinity here, we're actually a little bit higher. So we're capturing more of those samples uh, on the left-hand side. Okay, so that's not so bad. Let's double the number of estimators now. So that pushes our performance up to 86.2. And we've this cluster here, we've managed to achieve uh, a large number of uh, the, the uh, validation points. Let's go ahead and do a parallel view here so we can compare what we've learned against the original uh, data set there. And, and you can see that we've actually done a reasonable job. There are a couple of points here that are mislabeled and uh, down in this vicinity here, these should all be uh, green, and, and likewise up here should be red. Uh, but it's not doing so badly. Let's, um, just for fun, let's uh, bump ourselves up to 100 estimators. And that gets us up to 87.4% uh, accuracy. And let's double that again. At some point, we're going to kind of hit the uh, the limit there. So we've bumped up our performance just a tiny bit, but not, uh, that was probably one or two samples that got flipped over by adding, by doubling the number of estimators that we had. Um, these are both hyperparameters that one could imagine actually playing with in a grid search. Uh, let's try, so we went from 50 to 10 before and, and saw a boost in performance. Let's try going down to five just to see what happens. Okay, so in this particular case, our performance dropped uh, quite a bit. Um, what's happened here is that the, this red section here has, has grown to include some of the truly green samples, uh, and we've lost a whole bunch of red samples over here. So five is probably a little bit too uh, small. If we set this to 20, just for fun, 87.4, so that's not all that different from what we had with 10. So that so we're probably about in that uh, sweet spot there. But the, the takeaway here is that uh, we're doing a little bit better than what we could do with the voting classifier. Of course, we have a lot more estimators to work with, but by virtue of doing this bagging, we're actually able to push more diversity uh, into the, the different decision trees that we have. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and and uh, try this for support vector machines instead. So here's our uh, support vector machine performance is what we uh, saw before. We have that nice quadratic decision surface here. Eighty two point eight is not so bad uh, for the bagging classifier. I'm going to go ahead and just copy from up above. And let's see what we can do with uh, by using a set of support vector machines. I'm going to jump this down to, we'll start with 10 estimators there. Max samples, we were kind of doing about uh, 10 samples was best for our decision trees. Let's try that out for our support vector machines. Otherwise, everything is the same. So we've bumped our performance up just a tiny bit uh, when we did that by 1%. Okay, so that's not so uh, exciting. Let's jump our estimators up. So we've bumped up again uh, a, a, little, a little bit in performance. You can still see kind of that quadratic uh, shape there. Um, I don't know, I kind of doubt that adding an estimators, bumping that up again is going to help us all that much. And this is going to take us a few more minutes, apparently. I, I think I've hit kind of a critical point in my memory usage on my laptop here. Okay, so performance actually went down just a, a tiny bit, and, and that just has to do with the uh, set of estimators that we ended up with. So let's, I'm going to drop this back down to 100, and uh, just for fun, let's set max samples to 5. Okay, so we, a similar kind of behavior uh, as with the... Uh, decision trees. So, so there's there is a sweet spot somewhere 
uh, right in there with uh, max samples. There we go. So a max sample of eight and 100 estimators. I think that was the, that's the best performance that we've hit with this particular form of support vector machine. Okay, let's do let's do one other thing. Um, let's shift over to using a uh, a third degree polynomial for our support vector machine. We'll see what uh, it's capable of. I encourage you to play with this uh, with the last video. Now let's see what we can do here. Of course, with a third degree polynomial, this will take a little bit more time for training just the one classifier. Okay, so that took about a minute on my uh, laptop. It was only using one core uh, to do the training. You, you can see actually performance is quite a bit worse than with our degree two polynomial. Um, what we've really lost here is that we've, we've lost more of uh, this region here should be red, uh, more of this should be green. Those are really the, the key losses there. I'm going to try out the bagging classifier. I don't know if we're gonna improve that performance. The key is that uh, I had a total of 100 samples to work with for this one classifier here, and now we're going to train an ensemble of 100 of those, but with only eight samples each. So that training process should actually go fairly fast. And indeed it does. So there was actually essentially no pause there. The performance here is still at 83.6%. Uh, cert we certainly did better with the decision tree uh, algorithm. Um, just for one last test, we'll try 20 here. But I don't expect things to be all that uh, different here. As we've talked about before, the support vector machine classifier tends to do not quite so well when uh, the classes are uh, overlapping. And that's definitely the, the scenario that we're uh, asking our classifier to work with. Okay, so after that, we're still achieving 83.4%. So in this case, the conclusion really is that the support vector machine classifier is not going to do so well for us. Probably what's really going on here is that the support vector machines, even though we have 100 different estimators with different data sets that they're looking at, they're probably all giving us very similar decision boundaries. Whereas for the decision trees, we're probably getting quite different decision boundaries. And that's why building that ensemble uh, through this bagging process is uh, giving us a, an improvement in performance. Okay, that's our, our quick experiment with uh, bagging. And hopefully you can see that uh, we can improve performance a bit more when we force that independence, uh, at least for the right kinds of classifiers. Next up, we're going to look at some other methods for forcing independence.